Hey, what's going on? This is Jay from JHP Video Tutorials. And in this tutorial, we're going to go over focus stacking. And focus stacking, to put it simply, is just combining multiple exposures of the same object. In this case, it's going to be a US quarter with different depth of fields. And notice how, watch when I turn the focus ring, how I'm walking through the sharpness of the quarter or the depth of field. So right now, because I'm recording this video on my 5D Mark II, I can show you this. I also have um, the Kinko extension tubes on there. I got all three of them on there, which equals 68 millimeters, I believe. So I'm really zoomed in close. I'm also using the Canon 100 millimeter f2.8 LIS lens, and I have the camera on a tripod. But just to you know, give you a heads up on what I'm using here. So I'm zoomed in pretty much as close as I can get. And because I'm in video mode, the camera is set to f2.8 ISO 3200. So I have an extremely shallow depth of field right now. And what I want is I want a shot of the quarter, but I want the whole quarter sharp. And the only way to achieve that is to focus stack. So I would have to take multiple images. I would have to take a shot like right here with this edge sharp. Then I'd have to take a shot like right here with the word quarter sharp then move in a little bit, take another one, and walk down the quarter. See how I'm walking down the quarter? And I would take a shot each time. Now, depending on what your aperture is set to on your camera, it might take three or four shots, it might take 10 shots, it might take 12 shots. Like I said, right now my camera's set to f2.8. So if I was on f8, say, I would have a larger depth of field, maybe a quarter of an inch, as opposed to what I have now, which is about less than an eighth of an inch. But in any event, that's basically the concept. So what you would do is you would go through here and take a shot at each point, at each section of the quarter, so you capture all of the quarter sharp, and then you're going to combine the exposures in Photoshop, the different frames, and it's going to actually blend the images together and grab all the sharp detail from each shot and then combine them into a completed quarter at the end, which is absolutely amazing. So. What I'm going to do is, I'm just going to go through here while I'm recording, and I'm going to take the shots so you can see them exactly how you see them right now. Um, if I stop recording and take the shots, I'd be able to adjust the aperture and, you know, make it f8 or something like that. But for, for tutorial purposes, I'm just going to leave it as is, and I'm going to take the pictures as I'm recording so you can see exactly what, I'm, what, what you're seeing on this video. So I'm just going to zoom and try to get as close as I can to getting this sharp, and I'm going to take a picture, so hang on. All right, there's one shot. Now I gotta zoom just a little more. I wanna get the word quarter. All right, let me take that shot. Okay, got that. Now I just gotta continue to walk down the quarter pretty much. Image stabilization turned on on the lens right now because I'm touching the camera and I'm, I'm causing quite a bit of camera shake. You could probably see on the video how much camera shake I'm causing. I'm just going to take the rest of these pictures and then we will catch up in Lightroom. So I'm going to continue to walk through this and we should have like 10 exposures or whatever when we're done. So I'll see you guys in Lightroom. Alrighty, so here we are in Lightroom and here are the exposures from the quarter. And let me just scroll through them now. You can see here the I, sh I focused on the very front of the quarter, like in the video, and here's my shot and I'll zoom in to show you. I was on ISO 3200, so there is a decent amount of noise here. You know, this isn't ideally how you would do it. You would, you know, not want to re be recording video as you take the shot like I was doing, but I'm just trying to drive the point home as to what focus stacking is and how to do it. And this just seemed like the best way to actually visually get the, get the concept across. So anyway, here's the first shot. And now watch as I scroll through the images. Here's the second shot. You can see I'm walking through the depth of field and I'm getting each part of the quarter sharp. So I'm just working my way down, getting a little section of the quarter at a time, you know, sharp and captured. So here's all the images. So basically what I'm gonna do first is I'm gonna select the first image, I'm gonna enable the lens correction here so that fixes some of the lens distortion and stuff. And then I'm gonna adjust the white balance because that's way off and it's driving me a little nuts here. So let me just back that down a little bit, something like that right around 31, 36 or so. Then I'm just gonna hold shift down and select all of the quarters and then I'm gonna click sync. I'm just gonna leave everything selected for now and click synchronize. And that will adjust the white balance and add that lens correction option that I did to all of the images. 
So now still, I have all the images still selected. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to simply right click on the thumbnails on the bottom here and I'm going to go to edit in and then I'm check this out. Open as layers in Photoshop. That's exactly what I want to do. So I'm just going to click that and this will then open up in Photoshop as 14 layers. It's going to take a little while because these are 5D Mark II pictures. So each raw file is 21 approximately megapixels. So this is going to take a couple of minutes for, you know, Lightroom to do its thing and Photoshop to do its thing. So I'm just going to pause the video here and stay tuned. I will pick this up as soon as everything's opened up in Photoshop. Alrighty, so here we are in Photoshop CS5 and here's all our images here on the right hand side if you, if you check out the uh, layers palette. I'll just uh, drag this and minimize that. So you can see here's all our layers. So the first thing we're going to want to do is we're going to want to align these images just in case um, the camera moved or you know camera shake, things like that. So I'm just going to select all the layers and to do that I'm just going to hold the shift key down and then select on this bottom layer and now you can see all the layers are selected. All right. So then what we're going to do is we're just going to simply go to edit. Then we're going to do two different things. First we're going to do auto align layers and then we're going to do auto blend layers. So first let's click auto align and I'm just going to do auto and I'm going to leave these unchecked because we already pretty much did that in uh, Lightroom when we enabled the lens correction. That took care of this already. Otherwise you could do this if you don't have the lens correction checked. But uh, I just try auto. Auto usually does a good job. If not, you can try one of the other ones. I still I haven't had a problem with auto yet, so I'm just going to click OK. And this is going to take a couple of minutes, so I'm just going to hit pause, and I'll pick it up in a minute. Alrighty, so now Photoshop got them all aligned. And as you can see, if I scroll in here, you can see there's all this weirdness here. It shifted the images quite a bit, and it did, you know, what it think was it, what it thinks was the best job as far as aligning goes so you know it does a good job it doesn't it, when you look at it like this it looks like it kinda of screwed everything up but once you stack them it, it kinda of works it, it's pretty hard to explain but uh, you just gotta try it and see for yourself it, it's pretty amazing so as I, anyway as I was saying earlier um, the next step now that they're all aligned I still have all the layers selected here they're still all highlighted I'm just gonna go to edit and instead of align layers we're gonna do auto blend layers and then it's going to come up with a couple of options here and what we're doing is stacking so you can see seamless tones and colors you're going to want to check that and then you're just going to click OK and now what it's going to do is it's going to blend all the images together you know based on the sharpness somehow so it analyzes the images kind of like how it does when it auto aligns and it's just going to blend it all together and in, when it's all said and done we should get a nice sharp corner, quarter from uh, front to back so I'm going to let this go. I'm just going to hit pause and I'll pick it up as soon as this is done. But like I said, ultimately what we're looking for is a sharp quarter from the front to the back using all these different exposures. All right, so here we are back in Photoshop and it's done blending the layers. And as you can see, the quarter overall looks very good. That being said, there is some spots, you know, that don't look so good, like right here. And, you know, you can see basically it's overlapping where we overlapped the depth of field that we were getting and we're trying to combine all those depth of fields in all these layers so because I was recording video my aperture was set to f2.8 which is not the best aperture for doing something like this and the depth of field was extremely narrow so when we com so in other words we needed like 14 exposures but in reality we probably needed more like 20 and in order to capture all that detail throughout the entire quarter. So doing it as quick as I did, I only took, you know, like 10 shots or whatever. It came out really good. But as you can see, like right here, it's a little blurry. And right here at the feet of the uh, eagle, it's a little bit blurry. And up here, it's a little bit blurry. So I could have taken more exposures and probably gotten the whole thing sharp. But... Uh, Still, that being said, it, it came out really good. You know, considering how I was doing it, I was recording video and just clicking, taking the shot. So you, you couldn't possibly really do it a worse way. Um, but for, you know, tutorial purposes, it was great to do it that way. It, like, made sense, and I tried to, you know, hopefully understood it. So you can see, like, what focus stacking does. You basically just take a sharp shot of each image, and you make sure you have enough 
enough sharpness so it overlaps the next image. And then once you combine all of them, you'll get a sharp image from front to back. So doing it the way I did it, we got a pretty good result considering. So if you were doing this for real, you definitely want to have your aperture set to like f8 if possible or maybe even higher. Um, you know, use a flash so you don't have to worry about camera shake and things like that. Um, it, so, but that being said, it came out really good considering. So I hope you got something out of this and, you know, it's focus stacking, extremely simple. And all you really have to do is auto align and then auto blend and Photoshop takes care of everything for you. And if once you're happy with the result, you can just flatten the layer. And to do that, you would just click up here in the right hand corner of the layers palette and then just go to flatten image and that'll flatten it all to one layer. And then I'm just going to do a file and I'll do a save. And that's pretty much it. And then that'll be saved in Lightroom for us to check out. It's writing the TIFF format. Now if I go back to Lightroom, that image should be in there. Image, And you can see, once it comes up here, that uh, it looks pretty good. I mean, if you think about it from a practical perspective, you know, taking each image looks pretty, you know, bad. I mean, look at how shallow that depth of field is. It's definitely unusable, you know, but when you combine them all, pretty good pretty good result so again focus stacking 101 very simple concept and as you can see you basically just have to overlap the depth of field between each exposure and then you basically just combine the exposures and the sharpness will be you know maintained Photoshop will figure it out and just combined it for you so it's extremely easy to do and it, it's extremely useful for product photography or coins or any kind of macro for that matter so, again, I hope you guys got something out of this, and have a great day. Take care.